Hello Internet, it's me, Christina, and today I'm going to talk to you about all the books that I read in June. I did a lot of reading in June, and I am going to start with my audiobooks because I really don't want to forget to talk about any of them. So that is where I'm going to start. And we're going to start with Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. Concrete Rose was, is the prequel to The Hate You Give, and it focuses on Maverick and his life growing up. And if that's even possible, I loved this book more than The Hate You Give. I thought that it really captured the struggle of trying to get out of this cycle of violence and poverty, but how easy it is to fall back into it. I thought that it did a fabulous job at exposing how it's okay for men, especially black men, to feel, show emotions and to show their vulnerability, and I just thought it was beautifully written. So that I gave that one a very strong 5 out of 5. Next, I listened to The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. And I was not a big fan of this. I wanted to listen to the audiobook because I tried the book in the past and I couldn't get into it, so I said, let's give the audiobook a shot. And I wanted to watch the show over the summer, so I went ahead and listened to it. And I just, I found it lacking. I found it very much just stream of consciousness. And then on top of all of that, this was an audiobook done in the 80s before audiobooks were really popular. So the narrator was significantly older than how old Offred would have been, and that really was reflected in the um, narration and just didn't jive right with me. I realized in my infinite wisdom that I just jumped into what I thought about The Handmaid's Tale without actually talking about what the book is about. And so this is, for those who don't know, is published by Margaret Atwood in the 1980s, and it is about a, it takes place in Gilead, which is basically America, but it's become this theocracy, and we have Willow here now. And there is this huge problem with fertility, and a lot of people aren't able to have kids. And so women have lost the right to own property, handle money, to read, and those women who are fertile enough to have children are called handmaids, and they're basically passed around, um, assigned to the households of the government officials where they will be impregnated and give birth to a baby that is then given to this government official to raise. And um, it very much is a symbol of women's oppression. The next audiobook I read or listened to is Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance. And this is a memoir about J.D. Vance's experience growing up in a quote, hillbilly family. And, but he really focuses on the cycle of poverty and drug abuse and where the negative stereotypes for hillbillies come from and why those stereotypes exist. So it is a memoir, but it also just explores a lot and does its best to break down those stereotypes. And that was the part of the book that I enjoyed the most. And it talked about J.D. Vance's attempts to get out of this cycle of poverty, but still also be proud of his roots and where he came from. And I would give this book a four out of five stars. The last audiobook I completed in the month of June um, was Ray Bear by Jordan Ifuiko. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I mispronounced that name. So this is a young adult book and it was just absolutely amazing. And it is about a girl named Tari Sai. And she is being raised by a woman she only knows as the lady. And she's being raised to eventually be taken to the capital of the empire to see if she can become a part of the crown prince's council and when they do that it kind of reminded me of borg mind a little bit they all they join the prince's ray and there's like 11 of them and they join in the prince's ray and they can like share thoughts with each other and it helps the, the crown prince become immortal and the only way he can die is from old age or if someone from his council kills him and but he, Tari Sai is being sent there to kill the prince, but she doesn't want to do this. She wants to belong. She wants a family, and of course things are far more complicated than they seem. I loved this book. I wasn't sure I would like it, so I did the audiobook. I absolutely 1000% loved everything about it. It had this rich African culture. It had this 
fantasy world that was just built up and lush and beautiful and it had moments that reminded me of Ella Enchanted and every time I thought okay now everything's gonna wrap up it's like no but wait there's more but not in a way that felt dragged out I gave this a five out of five the next book in the series comes out in August I'm so excited to get my hands on it I am gonna also get a copy of Ray Bearer to just have on my shelf because first of all the cover is gorgeous second of all I definitely know I'll be reading this book again at some point in the future. I, now that we've done my audiobooks, I have all of the physical books I read. I believe it's 12 physical books total. The first one I read was A Shot at Normal by Marissa Reichart. And this is about a girl named Juniper. And her parents are like super hippies and they are anti-vaxxers. And one day, Juniper gets measles and she passes them along to someone else with fatal consequences. And then Juniper decides enough is enough. She's going to sue her parents and she is going to take them to court so she can get vaccinated. And I love the concept. My problem is a pet peeve of mine with many books is that court part that was like really prominent in the little blurb was not a big part of the plot. It was like something a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, and then the end. And it was a lot of other stuff. And that's what bothered me the most about this book. But I enjoyed the concept a lot. I thought it was extremely relevant, especially with what's going on today. And I definitely recommend it. The next four books I have are four books that my niece picked. And I did a reading vlog where I read the four books. She came over one day, I was babysitting her, and she picked four random books, two from this shelf, two from the shelf upstairs, and was like, these are the four books you're going to read. And she like knew nothing about them. The first one was St. John Paul the Great by Jason Ebert. And this is part biography. So the first half is a biography of John Paul the Great, who was the Pope. And then the second part talks about the five aspects of his life that were most important, that were most impactful on him. And that was young people. He was really involved with running youth groups at his churches and, and making sure the young people felt so safe and welcome in the Catholic Church human love, so compassion for other humans, the blessed sacrament, which is communion, the Virgin Mary and the cross. And so it talks about how each of those five things shaped his life as well. I give this book a three and a half stars. If I forgot to mention, I also give a shot at normal three and a half stars. It's hard for me, I feel like a lot of times to rate um, nonfiction books. I'm not as big into them, which makes it harder for me to rate. But I gave this a three and a half stars just because I found the biography part much more interesting to me. I learned a lot about Pope John Paul II. Next, we have Changeling by Philippa Gregory, and this is a young adult book. And what I've noticed with Philippa Gregory's books is if she's creating her own original content, she tends to just like go out. She's like, I'm just going to go full on weird, and y'all are all along for the ride. And that's what this book is like. It has Luca and Isolde. Yes, Isolde. And Luca is charged with heresy. He's a um, candidate to become a priest, and he's charged with heresy. So this takes place in medieval Europe. And so he is given the task of going around to all these places in Europe and figuring out if there's like a demon at work, or is it a miracle, or what. And the first stop is this abbey. And he goes there where Isolde is the abbess, and she has been dumped there by her brother because her brother wants her inheritance. And so um, Luca goes there to see if the nuns there are going insane, or are they the demons, or, or what. And then, um, but he's also then trying to save Isolde. And this is the beginning of a trilogy. I thought it was okay. I remember buying this ages ago simply because it was Philippa Gregory, and I wanted to have a full set of her books. I wasn't a big fan. Um, I thought it was strange. There was, they, they deal with the Abbey, then they go on to another, they deal with a werewolf, and what happened with the werewolf, I was like, really, really guys, it was just a bit too much, I just, I had a lot of trouble believing it, I do like the cover a lot though, I think it's really cool, and what's really cool, first of all, you have a beautiful map on the end papers, um, but then the cover is printed onto the book as well, which I thought was pretty unique for a hardback book, but I'd give this book three stars, I don't think I'll be rushing to pick up any of the other books in the series though. 
The next book that my niece picked was one that I read, one off of Goodreads, and that is Rooftop Party by Ellen Meister. Yes, that sounds right. Yes. So this is like a sequel in a series, but you don't have to read them because I didn't know that until part way through. And this follows a character named Dana, and she works as a host on like an HS and QVC type of TV show. And she has this great idea she's going to pitch to the executives, and they, they're at this rooftop party, and then the CEO is pushed from the roof and dies. And he was seen harassing Dana shortly before, so she, of course, is the t prime sub um, suspect. Her boyfriend is a police officer, and and I, I, I thought this book was all right as well. Um, what bothered me and this bothers me a lot with mystery books and shows is you have this everyday person inserting themselves into the investigation and withholding information from the police because they want to solve it themselves and that annoyed me and it was more like a um a contemporary book that every once in a while just had a mystery flair added in so i think i'm definitely going to unhaul this book i wasn't overly impressed with it the last book that my niece picked up for me was what was my favorite probably one of my favorite books of the entire month if not the year and that is white chrysanthemum by mary k brocht if you like island of sea women by lisa c you definitely need to check this book out this deals with hana during the japanese occupation of korea during the second world war and she is a hanyo which is a deep sea diver and she um, sacrifices herself so her sister won't be abducted by the Jap by Japanese soldiers. And she's taken to work in a brothel in Manchuria. And it is Hana trying to survive and trying to get home. And then years later, in 2011, we have Hana's sister, Emmy, who's trying to figure out what happened to her sister and deal with this guilt and find her sister. And also to reconcile with what happened to Hana and how she did that for her and it was just it was so heartbreaking to read this book and I think what frustrated me the most is in the back there was a timeline and so they talk about like a real event they did have a statue on private property in Seoul Korea across from the Japanese embassy to um commemorate all of these poor girls who were abducted by the Japanese and sold into sex work. And the Japanese government got pissed about this. So they convinced, they go, they work with the South Korean government, and they convince them to remove this statue from private land. And then they basically are like, okay, that whole issue with what we did is, we're not going to talk about it anymore. And I told that to my fiancé, and his face, he was like, you're kidding me, right? It was so frustrating, and just, oh my gosh. I loved this book so, 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 so much. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was heartbreaking. I thought it was everything that you would want in a book. You need to look for it. Um, this is the only book by this author right now, but this is an automatic buy author for me for now on. Next was a book that I've had my eye on for a while. Um, Haley and Bookland has read both books in this duology and loved them. And so the concept sounded really interesting to me. To me, so I have the first one. I definitely am going to be getting the second one. That is Wolf um, by Wolf. Sorry, I couldn't remember if it was by Wolf, Wolf or for Wolf. Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Browning. This is a YA alternative history book, which was great because I needed that for one of my reading challenges. And it deals with a girl named Yael. That's correct, yes, Yael. And she she's Jewish, and she was experimented on in a concentration camp, and they never say which camp it is and the, they're trying to turn her into the stereotypical Aryan in appearances to, to, to figure out if they can then do that safely to other um, to Germans who are not Jewish but have dark hair and dark eyes and while she's being experimented on she is given the ability to skin shift which helps her escape from the camp fast forward the Axis powers have won World War II. Surprise! And she is, yeah, Elle is part of the resistance. And to commemorate the victory, there is a motorcycle race across Eurasia, and it ends in Tokyo, Japan. And this is where the winner gets to meet Hitler. And so Yael 
skin shifts into the winner from the year before so she can meet Hitler and assassinate him. And this just sounds like this whole roller coaster, and you're like, I'm sorry, skin shifting, axis winning World War II, and a motorcycle race attempting to assassinate Hitler. What? It sounds like a lot. It is a lot. Sorry, I'm cleaning up those fuzz willows pulling apart in tennis ball. But it's keeping her quiet, so I'm just going to let her do it for now. Um, it sounds like a lot. It is a lot. But just trust me, it works, and it works beautifully. And the second is called Blood for Blood, the second book in the series. And I'm definitely going to be checking that one out soon, too. Next, I did a, I'm really upset. I had this reading vlog I filmed, and then the audio for it was garbage. So I, I don't have it, but I did a week of Pride books, because June is Pride Month. So I read four books, and I really worked hard to pick books that exemplified pride and represented a wide range of the LGBTQ community. And the first one I read is Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I was very hesitant to read this book because I did not like Circe at all. However, I love this book. So this follows Achilles and Patroclus, and we know Achilles from um, fighting in the Trojan War, but this deals with their childhood being trained by Chiron and the romance and love between Patroclus and Achilles, and then going off to fight in the Trojan War, which we know ends tragically for Achilles, and he actually goes into the war knowing he's going to die. So they're trying to, sorry, I'm picking up more of this fuzz, they're trying to keep Achilles trying to stay as long, alive for as long as possible so he can be with Patroclus, but then that's prolonging the war, and it's just, it's, it's beautiful. I loved everything about it. This book is definitely worth the hype. Next, I have a book that is something that I don't do. I can't remember the last time I did a book like this, and that's a book in prose, but I really wanted to read this book, and I couldn't find an audiobook version, so I went ahead and bought it, and that is Black Flamingo by Dean Adam. And this book is about a guy named Michael, a boy named Michael, and he's gay. And he's struggling to fit in. He lives in England, he's biracial, he is Jamaican and Cypriot, so his mom's from Cyprus. And so he's trying to figure out his racial identity and his sexual identity. And please note, in Jamaica it is illegal to be gay. And so he's trying to reconcile with that. He goes to college, he tries joining the Pan-Caribbean um, club, and he's like, I don't fit in here. He tries joining, there's like a Greek society um, for Greek students, doesn't fit in there. Tries the African American, or the um, black community, doesn't fit in there, and then he discovers drag, and that's where he fits in. And I just realized I stopped reading books a while ago, and I apologize. So he finds drag, and he's loving it and he becomes the black flamingo and it's all about him figuring out who he is and i i really liked it i think it would have worked better as just a straight novel in um just expository type novel not in prose because i feel like the poetry it really wasn't just it wasn't poetry it didn't flow like poetry it was more like just stinted sentences strung together and they didn't really lend themselves to the story um but, uh, and I wanted more. I wanted to see Michael come out to his Jamaican family and all of that, especially because he does mention, if I were to go to Jamaica, my sexuality, who I am, my identity would be a crime. And so I wanted to see more of that. But I really liked it, though. I really liked it. I thought that it really highlighted the importance of community and belonging. My next book, sorry, my next book that I read for Pride um, is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis, and this is a sci-fi book where humans have spread into the solar system, and they can't go past the, um, the asteroid belt because all those echoes and, and Siri and Google Home assistants, everything, like, they become sentient, like, all of the, those robot technology, and basically those are more, and they're like, okay, you can't go past the asteroid belt, we're going to go past it, though. And that'll be our space. And so there's, it, it, this book kind of confused me a little bit, it, um, but there's like these two communities. There's one that is a very religious community, and there's one that um, focuses more on technology. And then you have these, um, these this community, this third community is looked very, looked down upon. And so you have these three characters. You have first sister, 
And first, um, sisters are basically pre, um, priestesses that serve on military ships and they don't have the ability to talk. And not only are they sex workers, but they also are like confessionals. So soldiers can confess to them and go into battle feeling unburdened and they can't talk so they can they can't share the secrets. And so the first sister, she is the top one of these on this ship. And her goal, her job is she's been assigned to collect information about the captain um, and to spy on the captain who she is falling in love with. And then we have Leto, who is a soldier, and he is, you know, like the soldiers, they get paired up together. There's a rapier and a dagger, and they have like these implants so they can kind of communicate with each other. It gave me very much Borg vibes from Star Trek, and they could like suppress their emotions. So once again, Borg vibes. And his former partner, Hero, has gone off the grid, and he has to now go kill them. And so Leto has to go kill his former partner, who is a non-binary character, um, which I just loved. And Leto is listening to Hero's audio recordings explaining why they have stopped following the rules and why they have kind of gone off the reservation, so to speak. And then you have the, these three stories that don't seem connected at all, and they come together really well. I wish that there had been a little more world building because I was very confused at times about why you have these different factions and why they don't get along, but I did enjoy it and I am definitely looking forward to the sequel, which I do believe comes out in August. Don't quote me on that though. The last Pride book I read is Hanyan Issues Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Jagirdar. And this is a young adult book and it deals with Hani who is very popular at her school. She lives six place in Ireland. She's Bengali and she comes out to her friends as bisexual. And her friends are like, you can't be bisexual because you've never even kissed a girl. So how do you know? How do you know? You have to be dating someone then. And so she says, well, I'm dating Ishu over there, who is the only other South Asian girl in the school. Ishu is um, from India. And so Hani and Ishu, Ishu is gay, and she just hasn't come out to her parents yet, but they do agree to fake date. And it just becomes, it of course, becomes something bigger than it should be. It deals with gaslighting and Islamophobia and racism and bi erasure, and it does it all beautifully. There were so, I, so many times I wanted to like reach into the book and smack some of these characters, especially Hani's friends, because they're just the worst people ever 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 like there's this one scene where issue comes up and she's like hey honey can i go can we go talk in the hallway super quick about something and honey's friends like um you can't do that because our boyfriends aren't here so we can't just go sneak off and kiss them so that's not fair that you can just go off and sneak off and go kiss each other that's heterophobia and they're like we literally just want to go have a conversation and they're just horrible people. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Um, but I thought that it was really good that I hated these characters so much because that meant that they were written really, really well. So I loved this book. I love that the cover has like the bisexual flag on it. I loved everything about it. I wanted a little more from it, but overall I thought it was fabulous. The next book I read was just a quick thriller. I just wanted something quick. I read it in like 24 hours, and that is Mother Loves Me by Abby Davies. And this is about a girl named Maribel, and she's about 13, almost 13, and her mom puts her in little dolly dresses, you know, like all the frills and everything, and paints her face and does her makeup every day, and everything's great. And then one day, Mother shows up with another little girl named Clarabelle. And Mirabelle is all of a sudden realizing that she's kind of being pushed to the side. And maybe things aren't what they seem to be with the mother. And it's intense. And it, from like, from the moment the, pay, the book starts, you're just going full speed ahead to the very last second. And it had me on the edge of my seat. I kind of figured out what was going to happen, but still, I had to be sure. Um, and I absolutely loved it. The last book I read was a little bit of a disappointment to me. And that is Sinlin Ascends by Josiah, by Josiah Bancroft, 
my words are hard. And this is a steampunk book, and it follows Thomas Semlin, who has just gotten married, and he and his wife Maria are going to the Tower of Babel, which is a real place, and it's this huge tower with these, they're called ringdoms. So like the different levels, which are like a big level, and there's like smaller buildings inside, are each run differently. And he loses Maria. And so Semlin spends the rest of the book trying to find her, and this is the first in a series. And I, I liked it. I just found myself not caring. Like, I finished it this morning, and I really just kind of found myself going through the motions because I had to. I, I didn't love it as much as I did. I thought it was confusing. I thought that the concept was interesting, but just it wasn't enough to keep me interested. So I don't really know if I'm going to finish the series. There's like three more books. I might look and maybe get the second one and give that one a shot because I liked it enough, but I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. Um, but I, I wanted to like this book a lot more than I did. Reagan at Peru's Project recommended it. And it just, it was okay for me. Um, but overall, those are all the books I read throughout or listened to throughout the month of June. It was a great month for reading. Um, I already did it. I already did my July helpfuls, so that's going to be a huge month for me for reading as well. In the meantime, stay safe, um, take care of yourself, make sure you're reading lots of fun books and doing what makes you happy, and um, you can also hit the like and subscribe button down below so you can come back and find out when I have more content posted. In the meantime, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!